Hello and welcome to Blender Bite Size. In this video, I'll be showing you how to make this material procedurally in Blender. Feeling lazy? You can support this channel and skip the hard work by grabbing the blend file for this material from Gumroad for just a pound. Feeling flush? Feel free to throw some of that coin my way using the coffee link in the description below the video. Okay, something to blow your eyeballs with on this one. So we're going to start by just confirming that we've got our object loaded, our fabric setup done. If you need an, any advice or guidance on how to set up a fabric, then I do have a separate video on that. I'm in the shading tab and I've got viewport shading enabled and I've already got a principled shader applied to this um, fabric. So let's make a start. We're going to start by pressing Shift A and searching for a texture coordinate. As we want to control this via the UV texture coordinate, we'll plug that into the base color. Uh, next up, we're going to add a brick texture. Not something you'd probably expect for this, but we're going with it. Then we're going to add a Musgrave texture, followed by a Noise texture. Okay, so it's looking pretty rubbish so far. I'm going to make a couple of changes to the nodes we've already loaded. I'm going to change the Noise texture to 2D, Musgrave texture to 2D, Uh, we're also going to add a color ramp. Chuck it between the brick texture and the principal shader. For the color ramp, we're going to change the color mode to HSL and the interpolation to FAR. And we're going to set both values as red so that we just get some kind of rainbow effect going on. Uh, oh. Not that one, that one. Okay, so now we've got this going on. Next up I'm going to add a value node and set it at 1.75. I'm then going to add three math nodes, so I can just load one and duplicate that a couple of times. Set the first one to divide and set the value bottom value at two. Plug the value node into the top slot. Then set the other two at multiply. Plug the value node into the top slot of both. For the first one, set the value as 2, and for the second one, set the value as 5. Now we need to take those back a bit. Now this divide value we're going to plug into the roughness on the noise texture. This value we're going to take into the scale and the detail of the noise texture. The divide value we're going to take into the scale and detail of the Musgrave texture. No, we're not. We're going to take it into the dimension and the lacunarity. The first multiply value we're going to take into the scale and detail of the Musgrave texture. And this final multi multiply value we're going to take into the scale of the brick texture. Uh, 
Now the Musgrave texture, we actually need to connect to the vector value of the brick texture, and that's what gives us this kind of marbled effect. Having it into any of these other slots doesn't give us the effect we wanted, as you can see. Now we'll leave these top brick textures settings the same. Color one, I'm gonna just make white. Color two, black. And the mortar value, I'm gonna put at 0.5. And that just gives us a nice even spread of colors. Mortar size, I'm gonna leave as it is. Mortar smoothness, down to zero. Bias, leave it zero, and the other two things we'll leave at zero as well. Uh, sorry, at their standard values. The colors on the color ramp, we're just going to drag in a little bit, not too much. And then we're going to make a couple of changes to the principal shader. So the specular, we're decreasing to 0.15. The roughness up to 0.7 the transmission to 0.5 because we want some light coming through because it's fabric. Now that should give us everything that we need. So to stop this being a utter mess, what I'm gonna do is select everything here plus the three math nodes and press Control G to group it. And then use this little up arrow to come out of that. So you can now see we've just got the value, the node group, and the principal shader. If you've got the node wrangler enabled, you can press Shift and Equals after selecting them all just to line them up nicely so that we get a good group going on. And there we have our trippy fabric. Now, of course, you can change the value here to make changes to the overall pattern. Small changes make a big difference. So just press shift when you're clicking and dragging and you can create all sorts of things going on there. And if you want to change anything to do with the colors, obviously you would come into the group and affect this here. Changing these values as well does have a small impact, but generally um, I would leave this alone. So that's it. Let's just chuck this through the render. I'm using 128 samples using the Cycles render engine and I'm using tiling as well. So it comes out quite quickly at around 10 seconds and this is the result that we get. So pretty useful if you're into psychedelic design. Otherwise, you're, I'm sure you'll find a use for it. Anyway, if you have enjoyed the video, please do remember to give it a thumbs up and subscribe for future content. In the meantime, thanks for, to everyone for subscribing so far. The channel is growing very nicely. Please do remember I've got an archive of over 70 different materials so far at the time of recording this one. So please do go back and make sure to check those out too. And uh, if you've got any questions or suggestions, please remember to put them in the comment section below the video. In the meantime, thanks for watching.